G'day, we are here in the brewery for a bit of a tasting. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a different, this is a recipe video, my oat cream and IPA recipe video, but it's going to be a little bit different. Um, I was always moving towards this beer when I started with my NIPA uh, version one and then the Sabro tooth. And then I wanted to move on to get it closer to what people are used to, at least in Australia at the moment with uh, Deeds Brewing and uh, Mountain Culture, and things like that. Now, the, the, the camera doesn't lie, to be honest. It shows color, uh, even though these beers probably aren't quite in focus for you, because this is a sensitive camera. If I touch that, they probably are. Um, like fr from here, from this angle, they really don't look that much different. But I know they are, there's, there's differences here. Besides their age, this has got to be six weeks old in the keg at least. And while it's looking very brown on camera, it's really weird because it, it's actually looking lighter from this side. If I take a photo from this side um, and try and get the light right. But this one's actually a lighter color than the two middle ones. And this one's an IPA made from the same grain base. That's a different story. We'll get to that in a minute. It's bizarre on camera, because this one is lighter than these two, but on camera, these two look lighter. It is just bizarre. But anyway, so this has got to be six weeks old, at least. These were all, uh, besides the last two, they were sort of brewed three or four days apart from each other. But these rests were like, there was the two weeks sort of brew period in between. And there was a change that why, well, it's hard for me to explain my story because these two are actually darker, but the camera's playing weird games. These two um, are more, had more oats. This one still had a bit of wheat and flour and things added. Anyway, I, I'm not gonna go into full detail here. We're gonna go over and look at the recipes and the changes I made along the way. But what I can say is they all look very good. We'll try to get through this as quick as possible so this video doesn't get too long. We'll have a quick look at the Sabro Tooth recipe again. If you haven't seen the recipe creation video for this, uh, you can find that on my YouTube channel. Uh, I go all the way through it, how I did it, why I did it, uh, and I used a few different methods I hadn't used before. And that's like a multiple additions at 80, uh, below 80C uh, in the Whirlpool and things like that. But the real reason I did many versions of this was the malt. Uh, and the malt base. I wanted to improve my efficiency or see if I could uh, and see if figure out what problems I thought I was having. So if we have a quick look at the grain, uh, that's nearly half and half. I mean, of course it's <laughs> 2.7 kilo of Pilsner, 2 kilo of ale malt, uh, 600 grams of flaked wheat, 500 grams of oats, 300 grams of carapils. Um, I did end up adding some dextrose uh, and 200 grams of uh, wheat malt but we'll quickly jump to the oat cream version. And simply with the oat cream, you're really just adding, you know, obviously probably more oats uh, and some lactose for the cream. But you'll see here, I did adjust the malt bill a little bit. I added four kilo of Pilsner and one kilo of ale malt. So it was a bit lighter in color. I still had the 500 grams of uh, flaked oats, but I'd cut the wheat flaked uh, in half. I didn't want so much flaked wheat in there. Uh, I still had the, uh, the wheat malt as well, um, but I added 200 grams of wheat flour and 100 grams of oat flour. So that, I upped the oats a little bit um, and I'd cut back the flaked wheat, but added some wheat flour. Uh, this was a bit of an experiment for me. I had seen it done many times uh, when these uh, styles of beer were new. And then I did some research and found out they actually used to do it in some wit beers as well. Um, and they'd done it, uh, it was mentioned in Grain and Grapes. Um, an IPA video that they did and funnily enough I'd actually brewed this the week before they did it so that was a bit strange but uh, they mentioned it in there uh, 
to use it as well, just to, as a bit of theatre uh, and just to see how it goes. Now, some people add it to the boil. I didn't add it to the boil. I added it to the mash. So it was the mash was still uh, recirculating and it got filtered through the mash bed. It wasn't like it was added at the end to create uh, you know, the haze. That's, that's, that's not what it was about for me. It was about me um, pushing the efficiency limits on a small single vessel system uh, like the Robo Brew or Brazilla 35 litre or the, you know, the smaller Gutens and things like that. Um, and it worked. Uh, it blew off my efficiency out the window. I was Instead of being three or four points down, like I usually get with a lot of flaked uh, malts and that, I was uh, six points up. Uh, it blew me into 1.071. So my experiment worked efficiency wise. Um, but anyway, we'll, st we'll stop there. And we'll move on to the next recipe because there's a few to get through. Um, and I also, I, I should mention, I also stopped, uh, we'll talk about the hops here. I stopped doing those multiple um, uh, whirlpool entries. Um, I just put it to the single one. Uh, I still dropped it to, you know, under 80 degrees. But I just did a single edition instead of mucking around with those three separate editions. That was another one of the experiments I'd grabbed. I think that was from Worldworks. Um, and one of their first, you know, the famous beers. But I got rid of that because I just thought it was a waste of time. What I also did at this stage, I started pushing the water profiles more. Instead of, uh, you know, maybe two times, uh, two to one ratio with the salts, I pushed it right up. It was like nine to one. I think I ended up about, uh, uh, it was 20 parts per million to about 175 parts per million. Uh, so I really started pushing that water because uh, I didn't think the two to one was enough. So this one had a lot of wheat in it and flour. And the reason I used flour was one, because I'm not scared of using flour because all it is is milled up grain. If you use unbleached um, organic flour and not wholemeal because wholemeal will have the husk in it and everything, it's just milled up grain. As long as you're getting it from a reputable source because uh, you never quite, it could be anything from somewhere cheap, you know what I mean? But my efficiency shot through the roof. We'll go through this in a little bit more detail in a second in, in, when I go over the recipes and the changes I made. But I was about six or seven points up um, just from adding the flour. I cut, I, I cut the sabro out for the oat creams uh, only because I think for me, people get two different flavors or three different flavors from sabro. They get coconut, mint and cedar. I rarely get coconut. Sometimes I do, but rarely. My uh, sabro is really fresh, and I get a heap of mint and a heap of cedar, and I didn't want that in the oat cream. That was fine in the NIPA. I didn't want it in the oat cream. I wanted to be smoother and more gentle. Gentle? Is that the right word? I didn't think it would fit, so I cut it out. So move on to version four. Now, I did forget to mention in that last version, I got rid of the carapils. Uh, I just really didn't think it was that needed. Um, maybe if you, you are commercial and you're really worried about getting that head or, or so adding something, but it's that small of addition and I've got all that oats and, and barley and, and, and things like that, wheat. Um, I don't have to worry about head retention at all. Uh, I, I didn't find anyway. So when you look at the basic malt base, it is about four kilo, again, 3.8 kilo of Pilsner malt and a kilo of ale malt. Now, I had a few comments that people thought oh, I might have been my Woolworths rolled oats. Um, so I thought, all right, I'll, I'll buy some proper ones and just see if it makes a difference. So I bought some uh, rolled oats through Gladfield, which are the Haraways and the rolled barley. And I also bought some malted oats. And if you haven't seen malted oats, I'll chuck some up on the screen and just show you. What's good about these is, you know, it is oats inside it, of course, um, but it has a husk. And I found, I milled it really fine. I actually put it through my uh, 30 foul um, mill because I just wanted to make sure it got really ground up. Now, when I did, the husks were still intact and I didn't wet condition these husks. So if you're having problems with flow and you want to use a lot of oats, uh, consider using these malted oats. Uh, these ones are Gladfield, as I mentioned. Um, but they, I, I think they really helped with the flow. Um, next time I'm actually thinking about swapping, you know, a, a higher percentage to the malted oats. Now, I think they also made the colour a touch darker because I couldn't see any other reason why the beer would have got a touch darker. And you can see there, I still had the lactose, uh, corn sugar, and I still added the oat flour just to keep the recipes a little bit more consistent. Uh, so you can see there, that's where I get my three oats from. Oat flour, rolled oats, and malted oats. 
we quickly look at the hops. Uh, I had changed uh, Amarillo, Citra, Simcoe. Um, and in the dry hop, it went big. This is the one I dry hopped 20 grams per litre. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, you, you do have to be really, really careful with all these beers with these big dry hops and give it a, give it a good three or four day cold crash because you want all those hops out. You don't want any of them there. You don't want them to transfer them to the to the keg, is what I'm saying. Because uh, even if you like, if you're tipping up your fermenter at the end and you're getting tiny little bits of hop in, that's going to make it seem really, really bitter. Um, it really, really helps for a big, big cold crash. It depends on your fridge. You might be all right with three days. My my little fridge will take at least four days. My big fridge will probably do it in three days. You want to have a look and you want to make sure all those hops are dropped out and don't push it. Brew over the amount you need so you can leave some behind. Otherwise, you'll end up with a bitterness that you won't like, even if it is just the, from the dry hop. It happens. And just in this bit of footage here, you can see how much I had left over. That was just from one batch, but I had to get rid of all that. There was no point trying to transfer that. That was my waste. I didn't use the bottom jar, simply because I would have wasted too much beer. And after that beer, that was where I was going to stop. I was so happy with it. I was happy with the malt. I was happy with the water profile. I was happy with the dry hop. But then I thought, hmm, I'm still, I'm still questioning myself about one, the, the little bit of efficiency drop I still get, uh, and two, people are going to ask me for no chill. So what I thought I'd do is move to the Brazilla and do half batches. Now what that does is I, I'll get a lot more flow um, because the, the mash bed's thinner. It's, it's more spread out. Uh, but the trouble is, yeah, a little bit less sparge because I'll be using 30, something like 30 litres uh, to mash in. So I'll only be sparging maybe 7 litres. Uh, but I thought I had to try it. So <laughs> I threw it in to the 65 litre Bruzilla and off we went. Now the mash was a lot easier, of course. Uh, no, I didn't have any issues with the flow or anything like that. Uh, it all went pretty smoothly. I did have to change... Um, the whirlpool amount of hops. Now this is where you, you got to be a little bit careful. Now I don't uh, agree with no chilling um, beers that you've chilled below eighty degrees. Um, uh, you know, by the time you've finished your whirlpool, you know, you know it might be seventy degrees, and I've had that many messages from people that get infections. It is not funny. So I, I wouldn't recommend anyone do it, even though I know there's probably many that get away with it. Uh, so what I did, I dropped it down uh, to about 95, just naturally whirlpooling, let it go. It only took about five minutes to get from, you know, end of boil down to 95. That's without chilling, just whirlpooling and natural cooling. It took about five minutes. I threw the hops in and then I watched the temperature. And once I saw the temperature getting down to about 85 degrees, I stopped the whirlpool and I cubed it. And then I knew it was going into the cube at over 80 degrees. That made me happy and it made the word happy. Uh, I didn't get any infections and everything was fine. This recipe did turn out, apparently on paper, about 40, about 10 IBUs or more um, bitter than the last recipe. But via tasting next to each other, uh, I'm not sure it actually did end up that much more bitter. Um, that, that, that really isn't that much difference in taste. Uh, and even, say, it did, technically get there uh, that's still well within the realms of even uh, you know the the, the BJCP um, styles or, or what they're thinking about making a permanent style it still fits in that range you'll see there's different hops here I was mucking around with some experimental hops of a HPA which is now called something else um, and I had uh, some zapper there and a few other hops that I played with I'm not sure why the days of dry hopping didn't show up there in that beersmith recipe but I'll make sure that's adjusted when I upload the recipes. When I moved to these two, well these three really, I cut out the wheat. Um, I changed the wheat um, to all oats um, and flaked barley. So the amount of wheat I had in the original NIPAs was changed, went to flaked barley uh, and a couple of different types of oats. Uh, I had uh, oat malt, uh, flaked oat uh, and oat flour. Only 100 grams of oat flour. Bit of theatre, bit of see how it goes, right? And that's what these two are. But there is a difference between these two. 
uh, that's, I just got to check the numbers on the glass. This was uh, brewed uh, traditional, like I did the other NIPAs and things. I did change the hops slightly on all of these, just so I wasn't too bored. <laughs> you know, this is, this is version six. So I didn't want <laughs> six kegs of exactly the same beer where I'm the only one drinking them. Um, but that one's very close. Now this one was a no-chill. So if you're here um, and you go, oh, he's not gonna no-chill. This is a no-chill recipe. And as you can see, they look the same. This, I did use different hops. Not because it was no-chill, just again to change the hops, <laughs> you know, to make a difference for me, because I have to drink it. I did reduce the hops in the Whirlpool, um, and I reduced the dry hop, but that, oh, because I missed it. This one had a 20 grams a litre dry hop. I was copying what some of the big breweries do, and it worked, it worked sensationally well. Now, they've all been in the keg a few weeks, whether that 20 grams a litre made a difference. It did at the start, and I think it does to the flavour. But as far as the aroma goes, there isn't much difference. I mean, the no-chill one, I used 300 grams um, for my 23 litre batch, 22, 23 litre batch. Uh, to get 20 grams a litre, I had to use 460 or something grams it was. So the difference really isn't that much. So I reckon if you stick to about 100 grams or 150 grams first dry hop and 150 grams, 100 grams second dry hop, you're probably going to be okay. You don't really need to go as insane as I did in this beer, even though it is a good beer. Finally, we get to the last and the IPA version. I did it again in the 65 litre. I totally swapped the water profile around. As you do, you don't want a multi-profile, you want a hoppy profile. So I added, uh, raised up the uh, calcium sulfite and lowered the chloride. But as you can see, uh, 3.8 kilo of Pilsner, 1 kilo of ale malt, uh, that rolled oats are there, the rolled barley's there, and the malted oats are there, and I still use that 100 grams of oat flour. And I think you'll see in that final beer that that, that beer's going to clear up crystal clear. So, that, you know, it's not the oat flour added to the other recipes that gave it that, that, that look. It's got nothing to do with that. And of course, this one I tried to make a little more bitter. I could have actually pushed it a bit more. Um, I, I made it to about 60 IBUs. Um, in that big beer with that big malt base, I think I could have pushed it a bit more. At least to 66, maybe maybe six, maybe 70 IBUs. I even think I could have went a bit higher. But uh, you can see there, I was mucking around with the new hops again. Uh, BRU-1 and HBA-016, which again, is it Calypso, the new name? Something like that. It's got a new name. It's just been sort of released eclipse eclipse that's its new name so if you see eclipse anywhere um, that is the hba 16 that you'll see in some of my recipes now this last one here is exactly the same malt bill as this one and this one except it hasn't got the lactose and did i add the flour i can't remember if i had the flour we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the recipe we'll see Oh, maybe I did. I think I did add the flour. But the only thing I didn't do, I used uh, a different yeast. I actually used Kolsch yeast in this. Um, I was going to use Verdant or USA 5, but I had the Kolsch yeast there after a brew I'd just done, so I thought I'd just use the Kolsch yeast. And I know the Kolsch yeast drops really clear too, so I thought that'd be a good thing. But that's exactly the same malt bill. It still hasn't quite cleared yet. It's got a bit of chill haze. Um, I made the mistake of... Uh, when I uh, chilled it and put it in the fermenter, I should have waited for all the cold break to settle out and removed it, and that would have got rid of a lot of the chill haze. Because uh, if I let this warm up, I'm not going to right now because I'm a bit busy, but if I, if I let that warm up, it's nearly crystal clear, so it's, it's chill haze, and you can reduce chill haze. I should do a whole video on that. Um, but if you cut out the cold break out, and those sort of proteins out, that'll really help with your chill haze. Uh, and this was only dry hopped once, um, you know, at the end of the ferment. And I think I used 200 grams. Uh, this was, again, different hops, Brew-1 uh, and HBA-016. Uh, 
and I didn't chill it for the um, whirlpool. I didn't cool it down any. Um, and I really didn't for the, that this no chill one either. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the details. Uh, as I said, I don't think I'll show. You've seen me how I do. I brewed it nearly the same, exactly the same as the Sabro Tooth. Um, for the last couple, uh, maybe the last three, I moved to the 65, a single batch in the Brewzilla 65 litre. The reason there was, um, uh, I, I keep going to say I struggled with efficiency. Um, I didn't really struggle with efficiency. I was down points, right? And I'd get that every time I use a lot of flaked oats or flaked oats or flaked any ingredient, wheat, oats. Um, and it looked really bad when I was in Brewfather. Now, because I, I'd only have, I hadn't changed my single single batch profile in the 65 litre over to Brewfather yet. I've got a double batch one or, you know, or the, a full batch, but the half batch one is different. It's not as easy as just changing the, um, the amount. Things just, they, they don't quite work the same. It's pretty close. But anyway, so I, what I, what I knew is I'd get a lot more flow. Um, you know, you don't struggle with a, the, with a thick uh, grain bed. Grain bed's thinner. It doesn't matter that you've got so much oats and things. You get a lot more flow. Uh, you do get less sparge. So you'll lose efficiency on the less sparge, but um, you probably gain it from the better flow you have through the grain bed and that too. So, but what I found out in the end, they nearly came out just about level. Um, I really didn't... Uh, gain any efficiency from doing it. It was an easy. It was, it was an easier brew day. Um, but as far as efficiency wise, I really didn't gain much. What you probably could do is sparge a bit more, um, and then boil for ninety minutes instead of sixty minutes. So that would give you another, uh, you know, three, uh, two or three liters sparge, uh, which would get, probably bring your numbers up a little bit. People will, of course, ask me my favorite. I really don't have a favorite. I think. For a while there, yes, the 20 gram a litre one, a dry hopped was my favourite, but that'll be a very dangerous beer uh, to brew um, for beginners. All these beers are hard for beginners. The IPA, not so much, but the rest are. And IPAs are hard, uh, especially if you bottle. Uh, I've said it again and again, but people sort of uh, tend to gloss over that bit. And, and I know a lot of people, and I'm not knocking them for trying, but have tried this for their first or second brew, and it's a hard brew. It's a hard brew. Two hardest brews to brew right is probably an NIPA and a Hellas, or a really light lager or Pilsner. So I think that will do for my series of NIPAs this time. I've done a few last summer. I've done many last summer. But I've gone hard this, time, this year, and I think I've nailed it. I think I've nailed these ones. They are good. They really are. Oat cream NIPA, oat cream NIPA. No chill oat cream NIPA. IPA made from the, exactly the same malt base as that. I was inspired by the Garage Project, Jekyll and Hyde, where they did the same thing. NIPA and IPA with the same malt base. G'day, I'm just going to jump in here because this video is going way too long and obviously the brew day footage from the videos isn't going to fit on the end of this video, it'll be way too long. So I will edit together. I'll probably do the no chill one because um, this recipe uh, brew day can fit into the same sort of brew day as the Sabro Tooth exactly. Um, and the no chill one will take into account the single version in the 65 litre um, plus the no-chill all-in-one video. So that'll work. Again, I know I might be going over these things again and again. Your water's important. Your water's important. Um, in Melbourne, at least, I probably wouldn't even had, have to add any of the sulfite, sulfate into the water. I think I added less than a gram for a whole batch. Um, but bump it right up, bump your calcium uh, carb right up because you're going to need Around, I've been going about 20 to about 175, somewhere around there is easy for me to do without having to mess around too much. Hops, use whatever you want. Grab your favorite can from Deeds or from, from, from wherever uh, doing NIPAs and use them hops. You don't have to use the hops I'm using. 
not at all. Um, of course, do take some reference. Uh, some will clash or some, you know, you might not like it. Some people like that mix of hops. Some people like a single hop. Use what you like. Look at your favorite can and you'll be right. The malt base, I think I've got fine. You don't have to change it. Don't be afraid. It's going to be a tough brew day. It is going to be a tough brew day. Um, they just are. It'll be, it might be slow. Uh, it sort of depends on your system, but you know, it's going to be a tough brew day. Uh, don't be afraid of decks or sugar topping up with. I'd rather do that than straight light dry malt myself. I, I know other people think different, but sugar or dex is much better, cleaner. Um, and you should probably only have to add maybe two or 300 grams. It's really nothing. And if you have a look at these cans here, look, it's in all those beers. So, you know, don't be afraid of using it. Yeast. Yeast I used, oh, a lot, which I didn't really mention through this video. I used lots of different kinds. Uh, the first one was London Fog. Uh, the first Sabro Tooth, like the second version of the Sabro Tooth, I should say, was the Lalmont East Coast uh, NIPA yeast. To me, that was the worst performing. It, it ferments really well, but um, it dropped clearer um, more than any of the others did. Uh, London 3 yeast and Verdant. Verdant was really good. I'd rather use Verdant instead of the, the actual NIPA yeast. That worked really well, and it, t it seemed to finish a little bit higher than the NIPA yeast, which was a little bit weird, but it was really good. Uh, and then I think I went back to London Ale, uh, London Fog, because I had it in the fridge. But London Ale 3, uh, or, or London Fog, I find London Fog gets a bit low, but it still makes great beers. So the yeast you can muck around with too. See this? Sorry, it's dark in here, but see this? This was one of those really white looking beers that was left out on the bench from Sunday, two days. That's what oxidation does to your NIPAs. <laughs> I didn't smell it, yuck. It smells like yuck, like a, like a sherry, like a, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> so it might be a tough brew day. It doesn't matter, you'll get there in the end. You'll get something that's still good. Uh, all mine turned out, some days were rough, some days weren't so bad. Uh, yeah, you'll be right. So there you go, I'm not going to talk too much about it, I've already talked about it a lot. I've rounded up the, the Pilsner to 4 kilograms just to make it easier and you might get that little bit more uh, numbers out. I've upped the lactose a bit. Uh, it's up to you. 300 I had it was very, very subtle and that's because I like it very, very subtle. Um, I don't like too much lactose, but next batch I am going to try 400 just to push it up there. Uh, if you like those big creamy, ice creamy type NIPAs, you can up the lactose, uh, probably to half a kilo if you wanted to. Uh, if you wanted to make an ice cream one, you could add some fruit as well. Uh, I've left the dextrose in there. You might need that, you might not need it. Um, and the oat, oat flour, you could also cut that out if you wanted. Uh, looking at the hops, I've just used Amarillo Citra Simcoe. That's just a good classic combo, uh, and I like it. went really well in it. Uh, as I said before, you can add any hops that you like that you think would suit the style. There's the salts I used and the lactic acid I used. You might have to change it for your own water. I didn't use filtered water. I used uh, West Melbourne water for this. Uh, the yeast, if you're going to use liquid yeast, I've got two packets there, but just use one packet and do a starter. Don't just pitch one pack. Do a starter for these big beers or use two packets. Uh, same with dry uh, yeast, although I don't. you don't have to make a starter, but use two packets. Uh, It'll just help. It'll help a lot. A primary ferment at about 19, 20 degrees uh, for about a week. It takes mine a week to seven to eight days. I'm done. Uh, that's about it. We'll see you in the actual video of me brewing one and we can talk a bit more about it. Anyway, that will do me for today. Look out for the video soon. It'll be in a couple of days of probably the no chill one, maybe the other one as well. I'll get them all done. Uh, it was just been flat out going through the six different versions of brew footage. I thought it all fitted into this video and it's just not going to happen. Uh, so like, subscribe, share. I hope you've learned something. I hope I haven't confused you too much um, with, with showing all the different recipes. But uh, thanks very much. Thanks to my patrons because without them, these videos couldn't happen. Cheers.